Professor Dave and Chegg here, we now know what chirality is and how a molecule can have a number of different stereoisomers. But there are different types of stereoisomeric relationships, and we will want to be able to differentiate between them. So let's get a closer look now. Let's first consider molecules with differing numbers of chiral centers. If a molecule has precisely one chiral center, it is definitely a chiral molecule. It will have a mirror image that is a different molecule. However, if a molecule has two or more chiral centers, it may or may not be chiral overall, depending on whether there exists some internal symmetry. Stereoisomers that are mirror images of one another are called enantiomers. Looking at 2-bromobutane, there is only one chiral center, so we have just these two possible stereoisomers, and these are enantiomers. Your hands can also be thought of as having an enantiomeric relationship. However, when we have two or more chiral centers, there are more possible stereoisomers. Looking at this molecule with two chiral centers, these groups could both be on wedges, both on dashes, this one on a wedge and the other on a dash, or this one on a dash and the other on a wedge. These are all different molecules. They are different stereoisomers, as none of them are superposable on any other. However, as we said, enantiomers are specifically mirror images. When we take the mirror image of a molecule like this one, instead of literally drawing the mirror image, we can also just change every wedge to a dash and every dash to a wedge. So that means that these two molecules are enantiomers of one another, and these two are enantiomers of one another. But stereoisomers that are not enantiomers have a different relationship. They will be called diastereomers. So these are diastereomers, and so are these, and these, and these. So we can say that diastereomers are stereoisomers, that are not specifically mirror images of one another. We must understand that if a molecule has n chiral centers, it will have 2 to the n stereoisomers. So for two chiral centers, we got these four. With three chiral centers, we would get eight. With four, we get 16, and so forth. This is because there are more and more possible combinations of dash and wedge bonds. Looking at this example with four different groups on wedge bonds, changing the configuration of any one of these chiral centers will result in a different diastereomer, or any two chiral centers, or any three. But only if we invert every single stereocenter will we get the enantiomer. In other words, a molecule can have many, many diastereomers, but it will only have one enantiomer. If we have a molecule with 10 chiral centers, all with R configuration, changing the configuration of every single chiral center to get 10 S configurations will give us the enantiomer. Changing one or more, but not all, in any combination will give us one of the many possible diastereomers. To provide just one more important term, if a molecule has numerous chiral centers, Changing the configuration specifically at only one chiral center will produce an epimer of that molecule, such as with these two steroids, cholestinol and coprostenol, which have the same configuration at eight out of nine chiral centers. So epimers are a subcategory of diastereomers. We should now have a firm grasp of both enantiomers and diastereomers as different kinds of stereoisomers, and be able to assign these relationships to sets of molecules. Professor Dave for Chegg, see you next time.